Hello, and welcome to Unlocking Health with Dr. Lexi. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Elena Morreale, and she is a doctor of chiropractic who specializes in functional medicine, regenerative medicine, internal medicine, nutritional medicine, chiropractic, and bioenergetics now. So welcome. Welcome, uh, Elena, sure. Dr. Elena. You've got so so many modalities that you use. I think that's fantastic. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got involved in chiropractic and, and even all these specialties that you now have. Sure. So I used to work in the hospital as a medical technologist. So I was in my 20s at the time and I suffered from headaches and sinus problems. And I would go from doctor to doctor and they would all tell me, nothing's wrong with you. It's all in your head. And I was like, okay, well, that's great. So I just accepted that. You know, I thought, well, maybe there is nothing wrong. And as time went on, I had a friend, a very good friend, that would go to a chiropractor because she would have low back issues. And one day she mentioned to me, you should go to the chiropractor. And I kind of laughed and said, well, I don't have a back problem. Why would I go to the chiropractor? And then I just didn't pay any attention to it. So one day I was off of work and she happened to hurt her back. I still think she set me up for that, but she needed a ride to her chiropractor. So she called me and it was funny because I'll never forget. We pulled up to the chiropractor's office and I was looking around. She goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm looking for the back door. Nobody can see me go in here. And so she's like, there is no back door. We have to go in the front. So I went in with her helped her in because she couldn't walk and I would I sat way in a corner by myself just looking to make sure nobody was in there that I knew mm -hmm. and then I called her and I was like I had to help her because she couldn't walk so I took her back to the chiropractor's uh, adjusting room and then I watched I watched the chiropractor adjust her and she got up and walked off that table and I thought wow that's pretty cool mm -hmm. so then the chiropractor said to me, do you have any problems? I said, oh, no, 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 I'm good. <laughs> My friend chimed in and said, well, she has headaches. She has, you know, sinus problems. And then the chiropractor said, well, is it okay if I, you know, evaluate you, examine you, see if I can help you? And I said, well, you know, that's okay, but I don't know what you can do because every doctor told me there's nothing wrong. So I let her proceed to do exam and x-rays. And then she showed me x-rays and showed me where I had nerve interference and that could affect that cause the headaches or affect the sinuses. So then she wanted to adjust me and I said, okay. So she did. And when she adjusted me, it was like, wow, headache immediately stopped. Mm. Sinuses started to drain. I mean, it was life changing. And then I was like, wow, I want to know how to do this. I want to do what you do so I can help people. And she told me what school to go to. I went, turned in my resignation at the hospital and the rest is history. Oh my goodness. So, wow. Mm -hmm. It is those life-changing experiences that we have that take us on a whole different path. So absolutely. Um, now, Like I said, when we introduced you, you do a lot of different modalities. Why do you offer so much in your practice? I mean, do you, because I know most people think of chiropractors as they just go in and make some adjustments and you do sure. so much more than that. So can you kind of fill me in on how you got involved in all that and why? Sure, sure. So I've been practicing for 25 years. So as time went on, you know, I have patients that now are elderly same patient. So as they age, their needs changed. And they had, you know, some have become arthritic. So we needed to do something more than just a job. So that's why we brought in the regenerative medicine, so that we can help regenerate the joint versus having them go get a hip replacement or a knee replacement. And that was a nice adjunct for them. It was an alternative that was more on a natural for them. And then we also, because I worked in the laboratory, I always would incorporate the labs because we could see so much more of the patient as a whole. Right. And then we also brought in um, bioenergetic medicine because I had watched or experienced, I had another experience with that, that's another story, and um, just the value of it. So, mm -hmm. and, and each person you know, they're so different. So you want to kind of tailor to them what they need. 
And now since we've also brought in red light therapy, helps with inflammation, helps with weight loss because we did add weight loss because sometimes their back pain is not really from a misalignment. It's more caused from the excess weight Mm -hmm. that is inflaming that area all the time. So like I say, as time went on, I realized we needed to do more to support each patient. And that's, that's how we got to be into all these other things. So as you mentioned, patients are completely different. So what does it look like when a new patient comes in the door? How do you know what you're going to use with them or how you're going to go about treating them? Sure. So they'll come in and depending, you know, they're going to get a complete evaluation. And so depending what they're actually complaining of, we do have patients that walk in with cancer. So we're going to treat them different because we want to support their immune system and certain cancers they have we're not going to want to manipulate their spine we're going to want to do uh, gentler things with them Um, you might have like an infant i do have infants that come in that they're not sleeping or they're colicky so we're going to do you know a low force type of adjustment on them or we'll have an elderly that comes in complaining that their knee hurts and they don't want to do a knee replacement we even have people that come in that are injured so really based on what what walks through the door but it's always it's never just a spine or we're never looking at like oh it's just your wrist it's the whole body so we have to put a whole picture together is there any of the modalities that you work with that you have um just a passion for that you see just i'm sure all of them have changes and improvements in the clients and patients you're working Mm -hmm. with but is there one that just for whatever reason you just love there is one that is that I've had longer than the rest. So uh, I have a beamer, which is the pulse electromagnetic frequency, but I see all kinds of, of um, I, I don't want to really call them miracles, but I see these changes in these. Like I've, I've had people with um, glaucoma and or macular degeneration, and they put that beamer on right on the side of where that area is. And they'll go back to their doctor and their doctor says, what are you doing? This, this never goes away. And then they'll tell them and they look at them like, what are you, you're talking about a car? No, it's, it's, you know, and they just try to explain it to them. But, you know, it's, it's funny, but you know, that, that I've seen lots of stuff happen from that. People sleep better after they use that. Um, I've seen people, I've had a patient who had um, waiting to get into an orthopedic. She had broken a bone in her foot. And would use that and by the time she got to orthopedic it already started to to mend yep. so that one i really like a lot um i'm a big fan of the red light because we can again we can use that for so many things mm-hmm. inflammation for wounds for um, lymphatic drainage even weight loss so yep. those those little adjuncts are great we do iv therapy too and i like that because that's another um way to to help boost or help the patient. Absolutely. I agree with you about the Beamer. Um, I have had fantastic su- success yes. myself with the Beamer mm-hmm. and with others that I've used it on. Um, my parents don't have a Beamer, but I did buy them one of the, the sheets for their bed where uh-huh. they can plug in the grounding sheets. Yes. And just something even low level, like that's not quite to the level of the Beamer, but just there's so many things that can help them. And my parents saw an immediate difference in their mm-hmm. sleep. See. Of course, yeah. since they never follow my recommendations, I bought them a cheap <laughs> one and it's broken already. But that's oh, neither no. here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think it's great that you offer such a variety of things because, in my opinion, as both of us treating the body as a whole and more holistically and with integrative um, therapies, it really is important to have a, have a variety of modalities that really mm-hmm. allow us to address the physical, the mental, and, you know, right. in the energetic body as well. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I know, um, you know, when you talk about bioenergetics, I think a lot of people are, they feel like it's woo woo. Uh, you know, at yes. least when my clients come in, they're like kind of looking at me like I'm crazy. And it's one of those things that until you've tried it and seen the change in yourself. Um, so how, 
how do you describe bio, bioenergetics to someone who is not familiar with it at right. all? So, so since you say woo woo, let's go there because I was very skeptical. You know, uh-huh. I, I was in an office and there was a lady that would, would do this machine all the time. And really she would do it and she would scan uh, the client and she would do some of the scan their spine and she just wanted me to adjust. But I would sit there and I thought, wow, she's telling them all this stuff. I don't even think that's, you know, I thought it was just, I was just skeptical. And then I had two occasions, but the one I had on the bottom of my foot was itching. And when I looked on the bottom of my foot, it looked like it actually looked like a worm, like a parasite. So I decided I went to walk-in clinic. They had like medical books this thick. They came out, oh, well, we don't know. It looks like a parasite. They gave me some medicine for it. Never touched it, never went away. And it was on the bottom of the foot. It was very itchy. So I decided, well, let me just have her look at this. And so she tells me she she does you know measures the frequencies and she said well it's 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 a worm it's a parasite from a cat I'm like a cat I don't even have a cat and she, and then as we started to go back over things I had got bitten by an ant a red ant bite on the side of my foot so there was a little hole and I was playing volleyball in a sand pit a few days prior so we think that you know obviously we stepped in it and so she gave me homeopathic I put some on it and then I took some internally about instantly it went away so so still I wasn't convinced and, oh, no. and then another another life-changing experience I had gone up north to visit family it was during the winter and I slipped on ice and uh, landed on my thigh and my thigh was the color of my shirt mm-hmm. so when I came back here to Florida I all of a sudden I started to get abdominal pain in the lower right abdomen where I mean I had to crawl on the floor I couldn't move and I knew it wasn't my appendix because I had already had that taken out and so I, I was just so she said well let me see let me test you and she told me you have a tumor on your your ovary you have a solid mass and you have a one that's fluid and, and still that was I thought okay now this is getting too much so I went down a little further south to Sarasota to another practitioner, friends of mine. She does the same thing. Didn't tell her anything, just said I had pain. And she said the same thing. So I thought, let me just go get an MRI because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm skeptic, right? So MRI, there it was. One solid tumor, one liquid. And then wow. I thought, okay, I want this machine. I want to learn how to do this. And that's how I actually got into the energetic medicine. Mm-hmm. So when people come in and they think it's woo I I get it because I was right there with them, Mm -hmm. but you know, you're simply, all you're doing, I have two different modalities. I have a NES and I have um, a biomeridian, which um, really the patient will hold like a rod and you'll have a probe that you test the um, meridians in each hand that relate to organs. Really, you're putting them in a circuit, like an ohm meter, and you're just measuring frequencies, frequencies that... um, you want to see would be the ones that are the healing ones to the body. So if it falls above or below that range, now we know we have either inflammation or we have some uh, stress or something chronic. Then we go through and we start to test and look for it. And then we'll develop a specific protocol, whether it's homeopathics, whether it's nutraceuticals, and we do a combination for them. Mm -hmm. So again, they get a detailed, specific reading. Right. Right. I love it. I, I find, um, I got introduced to bioenergetics a few years ago, didn't know what it was. Right. And, and my husband is very analytical, very, um, you know, Uh everything's gotta be, you know, I mean, he's an engineer. So, Mm -hmm. um, so I started off with a Healy myself. I've moved way Uh beyond a Healy, but the, the improvements in him. And he even noticed these improvements, despite uh, like you being so super skeptical <laughs> of different things. Right. And so now it's a big part of what I do. I'm um, even with remote energetics. So mm-hmm. I get it. People, you know, being, you know, a little woo woo, but just to kind of put it out there, I ran a scan on myself and it pulled up that I was doing a, a specific liver cleanse, which I'm not going to mention, but uh-huh. the device pulled up that I was doing that exact specific liver cleanse in the middle of it. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, <laughs> it 
totally knew what yeah. I was doing. Yeah, you can't skew it. I mean, it's picking up your energy. You can't was, as much as you want to. It was yeah. wild. So now I know I have reached out to you in the past because I have had several of my clients that are struggling uh, with a cancer diagnosis. And you sure. really have a lot of background in, in helping and supporting the bodies for those with um, cancer. And although we don't treat cancer, we do support the body. And can you tell me a little bit about how you may help somebody and support their body if they do have cancer? Sure. So yeah, like you said, we're not actually treating the cancer. We're just going to boost up their immune system. And then, you know, we do in, in that protocol, we do, we really go heavy to boost up the immune system. And we do have homeopathics and nutraceuticals that will chase out all the bugs or the bad stuff. And then if you're boosting up that immune system, you know, the immune system gets stronger than the cancer because everybody has cancer cells in their body. Mm -hmm. It's when the immune system gets weak that the cancer takes over. So the more we can boost that immune system up, now the immune system is on top and then the cancer can't survive that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I just lost my train of thought what I was going to ask. Um, so, you know, is this something that it's like a one-off or someone comes in and you give them just a, a few nutraceuticals or homeopathics, or do you see them on a regular basis to monitor how their immune system is changing? Right. So when they initially come in, I, I have in my um, energetic machine, I have set up an entire cancer protocol. So when they come in, if they came in with breast cancer, I already know they have breast cancer, but I check other areas to see where it's gone or spread. Mm -hmm. And remember, energetic is we're looking at a cellular level. So we're picking it up before it may even show up on a scan right. or before it gets in the blood. And, and I've had two specific instances. One was um, a friend of mine. She had come in and... Um, she just wasn't feeling well and we kept picking picking up or scanning breast cancer because even if they're not coming in with that complaint i always scan everybody for it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so um you know and i told her you know certain things that she should do and she just at that time was not willing to do it you know it was just too much and then she she told me it was maybe a couple months later she said she went over to the cancer center that's over here and they said, no, you don't have any cancer. I said, oh, okay. Two years later, she was diagnosed full-blown with stage four breast cancer. So we know we had two years before right. it even got to the medical diagnosis that we could have turned it around or showed her how to turn it around. And then I had another gentleman who, same type of thing, uh, leukemia was showing up for him. Mm -hmm. Same thing, told him. He said, no, I went got tested, I'm fine. Two years later, same thing. So we know that, you know, there's time to reverse or help the body to reverse that because, like I said, if the immune system's on top, it's going to shut down the cancer. Of course, when they come in, it, it's like you say, it's a whole thing. It's the mind, the body, the physical part. It's also diet is important, mm -hmm. which so many people don't understand. I mean, sugar will fuel cancer like nobody's business for each Normal blood cell, you have two receptor sites. When you have cancer, 40 or more sugar receptor sites. And that's why when they do a PET scan, what do they highlight it with? Glucose. Sure. So mm -hmm. they can see where the cancer goes. Yet, you know, on the medical side, they'll tell you, oh, no, just eat what you want. So that's important. So now we have to do lifestyle changes for the patients. So in that first month, I always want to see them four weeks later because their body will change so quickly in that first month that you know, they're not going to be on the same protocol. So we need to keep changing so as they progress. Okay. And then as we start to see them progress, then we'll maybe go out six weeks, then maybe eight weeks, then we'll get them to three months. And we just, you know, the idea, the idea is for their body to start taking over, not to be dependent on some type of homeopathic or some um, nutraceutical and, and then we just, we keep revisiting and I keep monitoring with that protocol I have. And then if, if some, some people want to do a scan so they can see and they'll see that everything's 
improved. So um, it's it's quite a workup depending how bad or what level they're at and how, how quick they respond. You know, a younger person may respond quicker than somebody who's older and has comorbidities. Right. So again, it gets, that's how it, it gets tallied for each patient. I love that you do that because the body, one thing I discuss a lot is that the body does have an innate ability to heal, Mm -hmm. but sometimes it needs to be pushed (laughs) uh, into the right direction to be able to do that, you know, and we've for so long, I think where I really like bioenergetics is that we have lost over time, our ability to really get in tune with our bodies. We're so busy mm-hmm, with everything sure. in the environment in this run, 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 go, go, go. And so I think, you know, a hundred years ago, life was a lot different and people were more in tune mm-hmm. to their body before things sure. started to manifest. And, right. and like you said, if you start to, to treat something at an energetic level before it really blossoms into a state mm-hmm. of pathology, then it can be reversed much right. easier than, sure. than otherwise. So right. And 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 two, you always need to address the emotional component because there's an emotional component with every disease. And that seems to be the hardest part for the patients. When they plateau, then it's like, okay, we have to address your emotional problem. And some are good. They'll they'll be okay with it. Some don't want to go there. Mm-hmm. So that takes time. Right. Now do you work on that with them or do you refer them to someone? I, if they, because in my uh, energetic, I have some emotional stuff we can do. If they're open to it, then we'll do it. If not, then I will recommend, you know, that they see somebody that works specifically to that. But I, you know, I have patients that come in from various states or countries to see me. So sometimes they do go back to where they're, they're at and they find somebody there that they can work on a regular basis. Um, so it just depends what they're willing to do or want to do. A lot of people I, I realize aren't comfortable speaking about their emotions. They don't even want to go there. Yeah. So, well, I don't think yeah. most even know that they have right. these repressed emotions and it's those repressed emotions that of things in the past, we felt like we've already dealt with mm-hmm. that are where exactly. things manifest. So, yeah, exactly. So- I had, I had, I had a psychologist was a patient and she had cancer mm-hmm. and uh she you know she had the same cancer as a similar patient and they wanted to talk with each other as far as results and so on and they were a little different age he was man female and they, he had diabetes she didn't but he was doing so much better than her and she would plateau and she just didn't understand because so i said okay it's time we address the emotion Oh no, I dealt with all that. I said, okay, let's, are, are you up for it? And she, she agreed to it. And then we delved into what was going on. And, and she was shocked because she's, you know, it had been a lot of like her child, her mother had her while she was very young. Mm-hmm. And um, she said, she told me she remembered she was like two or three years old and her mom put her, her um, winter jacket on. They lived up in Minnesota and uh, sent her to the grocery store at two or three I'm like how could you even manage that she was I don't know but she did so it was almost like she had become the parent for the mother and but there was a lot of resentment that she had never dealt with once she did that she got right over her plateau wow but it was it was hard because she thought she dealt with all that mm-hmm. so it's it, big life-changing yeah. And again, that's where the energetics come in because our right. emotions are energetic. And so wherever yes. they're stuck in our body, again, is where mm-hmm. things tend to manifest. So exactly. by you working on all those bits and pieces, it's going to be life transforming for your patients. Sure. Um, one sure. thing that, you know, we had um, kind of alluded to and, and talked about before we got on the call was so that people are able to change their health. It is within them to take those steps and, and be it um, finding a professional that can push them in the right direction or, or, sure. or whatever. Um, how do you encourage people to take control and, and start being yes. responsible for their health? I think that people need to know that they do have a choice. And that's why I tell them health, you know, health is a choice. You're in charge. The doctor works for you. If you're not happy with that doctor, you fire that doctor and you find another doctor because 
you know, there's more than just take a pill and then send you home. I mean, there's more to do to your body than, right. than just a pill. So they have to know these other options. They have to know, you know, diet. Diet is probably, you know, a good 70% of their health, mm-hmm. probably more, because most of the disease will start like that. So yeah. that, you know, it's really education. They don't know what they don't know unless you start to educate them. You know, and you'll have some patients that'll have resistance. I'll have people, you know, I had a gentleman, he had cancer and he was, you know, okay, I said, you need to do this with your diet. Well, I'm not going to do that. I said, well, then I'm not going to help you because I can't babysit you. And so you're in charge of that. Those are things you can do to assist yourself. And, uh, you know, I had it, this is funny because, and I, and I guess it just needed to come out to him. I would never do that. But this, this one gentleman he had talked with me and he was like I'm not going to do that it's too much money and and you know because he had cancer he's like it's too much money and I just don't want to do that and no sooner did he say that out of my mouth rolled and so was the funeral have you priced that lately and it was like I thought did that come out of my mouth but it, it he needed to hear it because he's like you know what yeah, he said I'm going to do it he did the he did the entire protocol and mm-hmm. he went into remission Wow. So, you know, sometimes, you know, it's that energy play. And I would, like I say, would never have it, but it needed to be heard, apparently. And it it was good for him. You know, you bring up a good point with the, with the financial um, Mm -hmm. portion of, of working with a healthcare provider, especially if it's not covered by insurance. And I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I always get people calling and say, well, do you take insurance? And, mm-hmm. and the issue is more, no, insurance doesn't take Correct. me, you know, because yes, they don't continue sure. to make money off of me. And, and like you said to him, even though that felt a little off to you, you're right. You need sure. to say this sometimes. So, I, you know, when I'm speaking with my clients and they push back on the investment mm-hmm. and I like to call it an investment. I know people will say, well, that's a a sales pitch type of thing. And I said, well, it's an investment in your health. It's an investment in your well-being, right? So when someone comes in and they are struggling over that financial investment, just like you did, you know, I kind of walk back and say, what is the cost of not changing this, right? Like how many days off of work, how much, how many Mm -hmm. family outings are you going to miss? You know, what are your co-pays and you know, career sure. advancements or lack thereof. So there's so much more into this picture of the financial investment mm-hmm. than many people realize. Right, right. It's 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 making them realize your health is a priority. Without your mm-hmm. health, it doesn't matter your finances, what you have, because if you're not healthy, you can't enjoy that anyway. Yep. You know, so, and, and they'll tell me, well, my insurance pays for it. I said, so your insurance pays for chemo. And so that's poison. So let's go in my garage and let me pick out any poison you want. I, you know, I won't charge you. Don't Will you take you. it? Well, no. <laughs> yeah. like, they won't take it. So why would you do that to yourself? Right. You right. know? So it, it really, again, like I say, it's educating them or bringing to their attention really what they're doing. That it's har- more harmful than helpful to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, are there any takeaways that you want to give people? I mean, I know we talked about they're in control of their own health sure. and firing their doctor. Are there any other takeaways that you want people to have or are there questions they should ask when they're looking for maybe a local chiropractor, someone to work with? Yeah, I, I think, you know, especially if you're not getting answers, you do have to keep looking until you get the right Till you get to the right source because for every illness or anything there's always something that can be done you know naturally to help you get through that so always remember that you know you don't have to accept what you're told and, and the other thing i say too is i try to tell people don't claim the name of the diagnosis because you you know that's energetic too just figure out how to get your immune system strong. Mm-hmm. That's your main thing. And your diet. You all, I think diet it, it needs to be stressed more to people. You know, sugar is inflammatory. Grains are inflammatory. Dairy is inflammatory. You have, to, you have to know these things so mm-hmm. that you don't 
continue to put yourself in a disease state. So all those things are, are good to know. And yes, you know, it's better to eat clean food than food that has pesticides and so on. It, you know, staying away from your process, staying away from the fast food, all that is going to bring your health down instead of support you. Right. Now, if someone wants to get in contact with you, you are located in Tampa, Florida. Yes. Um, so you mm -hmm. have a physical office there. How can someone reach out if they want to schedule an appointment with you? Sure. So they can call us at 813-968-5404, or they can look us up on um, our website, the www.drelenamoriel.com. And then we're on Instagram. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. So any of those outlets, they can, you know, just reach out, message us on, on the website. We have a form they can fill out. It'll go right to us. You can set up consults. So lots of, lots of ways to reach out to us. We have done um, uh, online, you know, long distance visits as well, depending what we're, mm -hmm. we're dealing with. You know, obviously we can't do the chiropractic over the internet, right. but we could do, um, you know, yeah, there's stuff. So some consults Lots of uh, in this day with zoom. Now there's so much that we can do to sure. support one another. Um, I know I've hopefully uh, I've sent a few people your way, whether or not they <laughs> told you, I have no idea, but, yeah. um, I really appreciate you taking the time. I'm going to put all of your information in the links below so that anyone can reach out to you. I'd like to have a follow-up conversation potentially someday about the regenerative sure. medicine that you do. Sure. You're just doing so much and it's game changing. And I, I appreciate what you do for the people that need your help. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me on your podcast. My pleasure. My pleasure.